In this video, we're going to look at adding images to your Shopify website uh, and adding them manually. Uh, there are two ways of adding products. You can import them from a spreadsheet or CSV file, or you can type the details in manually. Uh, once your website's set up, most of the time you'll be adding individual products, so uh, manually makes more sense. So here's how we do that. Simply go to the products menu link uh, in, from your um, uh, dashboard, then click on add product. In here, we give it a title. I'm just gonna make something up here. Um, we give it, uh, and this is the title that your customer will go, is going to see at the front end of the website. Um, we're going to give it a description, and this can be a few words or multiple paragraphs, depending on what your customer is going to expect to want to know. So just that goes in there. And then we add an image. And from media, we go add file. And that will take you to your local computer, which is on my other screen, so you can't actually see it here. And we just grab a picture from there. There we go, and open. And that will upload. And Shopify will resize the images as required. So there's our image. We can add multiple images if we want. Now we come to our pricing. Uh, when adding the price, if the product is taxable, the price must be tax inclusive. So if it's a $300 item with 10% tax, it's $330 is the price you add here. Um, cost per item is what you pay for the item. That's so that you can track what your margins and, and, and profits are on your individual sales and on sales overall. Um, whatever that might be, uh, pop that in. Compare it price is if the, you want to put in you know, a recommended retail price, um, which is more than what you sell for. Um, that's an optional figure there. So that's our, uh, our pricing. We then come down to inventory. Um, with inventory, we need a, a, an SKU or stock keeping unit. Uh, if this is a, a, an actual product you're selling now, if this is basically a, um, a parent product, then the SKU is not needed. Uh, the SKU then goes onto the variance when we add the variance. So if you've got, if we're talking about um, saying, let's say in this case, this walker comes in three different colors, so we'll have three different variants for it. We're not gonna be selling this main one, we're gonna be selling it from the actual variance. So that's where you would put the SKU. Tracking quantity is, again, if, you're just, if you've got stock and you wanna know how much you've got left in stock, you have that turned on. Otherwise, you can turn it off. If it's a physical product, um, for uh, shipping calculations, you would then need a weight normally, unless you're doing flat shipping or a flat price or, or free shipping. Uh, so put the weight of your product in there. Um, the next thing we need to look at is variants. Uh, variants are things like, uh, say, uh, color. Let's look at our example there before. We've got a colored product, uh, comes in three colors. So uh, here we've got red, we just comma to limit, uh, blue, oops, blue, and silver are the three products, the three colors that we're selling this product in. Uh, this will now cr create the variance for this product. If you have sizes as well, you put your sizes in and then there'd be a variant created for each combination. Now, if we come down here, here's what we've entered. We've red, we've got blue, we've got silver, and you need to add your SKUs for those, of course. Um, whatever they may be. Normally you'd have something from your, uh, the, your supplier. If not, you might make up your own. So put our SKUs in and there are our variants. Now scrolling back up and we see on the right hand side, we've got some important information here. Product type, uh, in this case, it's a, um, uh, a walker. You have a vendor, if there's a particular manufacturer for this. And collect collections. Now, 
we've covered collections in previous uh, um, uh, previous videos. In this case, I don't have any collections set up here, but your collections, you have manual collections and you have um, automatic collections. Manual collection is the one that we use most commonly, uh, and that is it. You just simply choose from your drop down list what collection this product should belong to, or collections, you can add multiples. Um, or if it's an automatic collection, you put that information in the tags, and the tags will pick up, um, or the auto, auto collection will pick up the products that have a tag that matches the instructions we set up for that collection. So um, this might be a featured product that we're going to add, and that's going to go into the uh, uh, a collection that we have set up for featured products. And uh, that's how, where we add that collections information. It's important that we put that in, otherwise the product will never get found because your menu items are all based on your collections. And of course, we need to make the product active. If you leave a draft, no one will ever see it. That's all there is to do to add to the products. Oh, sorry, there's, there's not. There's one more very important thing. If we scroll way down to the bottom, we've got down here, search engine listing preview. That's what's going to show when Google finds this product. Not very impressive. So we want to edit that. So we're going to give it a title. Um, we we'll sit on Walker. We might put the brand name in there as well if it's people are searching for particular brands. Then the description we put in here is not necessarily the same description you have above. The description here is what you will have if when you do a search in Google, uh, so in this case we search for buckets, and if we scroll down we see this one. It's got a description, you've got the manufacturer, round bucket, capacity of 10 litres, has the information pe that people are, uh, is going to get people's attention and get them most likely to click on there. Saying we supply high quality plastic panels is not very good on an individual product. That might be in a generic page, but for the individual products, we want the specifics of the product. Because if I'm looking for a 10 litre bucket, that's the link I'm going to click on, not the ones up here. So that's where we put that description for, um, out for Google. URL and handle, um, leave that alone. There's no need to mess with that. Um, in most cases, unless you've got a very strangely structured uh, or, or convoluted structured uh, menu, uh, you might want to shorten it. But in most cases, simply just leave that product there and that's all we need. So there we have it. We've now set, added a product with three different uh, variants with our image, we put it into a collection, and now that product is ready to be sold. And we just have to say, save, and we're done.